guys, Thunder E here, and uh, welcome to my video on the Kia EV9. Now, this is Kia's latest seven-seater SUV, and one of the few seven-seater electric SUVs on the market. Now, you're probably wondering if I'm gonna give you a full review on this car, um, a breakdown, and no, I'm actually gonna give you a different video um, because Yes, I'm not really a car guy. I do like cars. I do like electric vehicles to a certain extent. I'll give that as my caveat. Uh, but I want to just give you five things that I like about this vehicle and a few things that I don't. Um, but that being said, the vehicle is available now. It starts at 53,000 um, and you can go all the way to a trim at 73,000. I do have the long range all wheel drive. That's what I'm testing here. And this is uh, you can the package MSRP starting is at I believe 69 and then of course you can customize it whichever way you want the vehicle gives you 373 horsepower um, and uh, the mileage is above 300 miles so one of the things I do like and the first thing is the design of the Kia EV9 this is a lovely looking SUV it's futuristic, but still very grounded in reality. I love the fact that while driving around, people looked at it and were like, this is different, you know? And even the first time my wife saw the vehicle, she's like, I like it. It's got that different look, but still very grounded as being a, a vehicle. It doesn't look like an electric vehicle that everybody tries to make look funkified. This kind of reminds me of something from a futuristic movie where they took a car and they try to make it look futuristic, but also still very grounded. So I kind of like the approach. I like the fact that the front grille is pretty nice and big. You've got the running uh, daytime lights, uh, LED lights in front. The back as well, really nice and broad. The finishing across the side panels, the fact that the door handles uh, do pop out um, on its own. Whenever you you know come close to the car, you open the car. Um, also, the 20 inch rims are pretty nice. The wheels are pretty nice with, of course, the, the wheel covers. Giving you all that very robust, rugged look, but also nothing too overbearing as well so that's actually pretty cool now the second thing i do like about this vehicle is the interior now it's a cloudy day but you can see a lot of the interior as we cut in and out is that this is a spacious interior that's the first thing it's got a lot of space whether you're sitting in the first row like i have not needed to move my seat back any further the second row has a lot of space you can get captain chairs if you want to in the second row or in this case i don't um, and then you get a bench or you can have a and then the third row is just a two-seater at the very back very spacious in all three rows whether i'm sitting in the second or i'm sitting in the third row now the third row you do have to move the second row a little bit forward but this is space for everyone there there's also usb type c um charging ports for every single seat in this car for the third row for the second row which is great the second row you can get heated and cool seats for the second row as you do have for the first row as well the seats are really comfortable i've got more fabric and i've got, kind of got like this meshy uh net padding for the for the headrest which feels like a gaming chair which i i can see you know if you're buying a car this price might you might not want that but i kind of like it uh it's comfortable but not too comfortable uh, it's kind of right, like the right kind of comfort for me. This is all fabric interior. Uh, you've got little things around the interior that make it really nice. Uh, for instance, you can, of course, uh, open and close the cup holder section, if you will. Uh, you've got wireless charging in front that kind of is a bit hidden as well. You've got USB Type-C charging as well, glove compartments. Um, and then you've also got this nice middle tray in the second row uh, that allows you to place stuff, a couple of those there as well. So there's enough things in the interior that make it really robust and um, active for a lot of people. Now, when I move up to my third thing, um, this kind of has to do with the interior itself. And this is the audio in the car. The speaker system is fantastic. It's Meridian speaker systems in the car. And I like the placement of the speakers. You've got little speakers in the front, on the bottom. Every row has its array of speakers. And what I like about that is that when you're listening to music, it's not loud. It is clear. It's not overbearing. It's very, very clear. And then the other thing too is, you know, when you're using, say, navigation and you're listening to music, it actually cuts off the music in the front row 
and it moves the music to the rear, or at least you can hear it just in the rear. So it finally sounds distant and you can hear the navigation quite easily. It's a very, a lot of cars do this, but I just like the implementation here in this vehicle. It is pretty clean and it's pretty crisp uh, on there. Now, another thing I do like is the entertainment system, or you could say the digital cluster on this car. What I like about this is a couple of things. You've got this massive display, which is broken into technically three displays. You've got, of course, your cluster in front of you. You've got the side panel right next to it. And then you've got, of course, the center console here, which you can navigate a bunch of things. Below that is a haptic touch panel for your home map search media, which is quite interesting to use. Uh, it is kind of like touch sensitive, so you gotta have to press through. And then below that, you've got physical buttons for like your temperature controls, which I do like. Now, I like the entertainment system because it is really easy to use, being able to just kind of go home or go to maps and find the things you want to, media. Everything is kind of easy to figure out and find. I don't have to kind of learn a car system to know where things are. So I do like that. Um, I like that easy accessibility for things all around. Now, one thing I do uh, will say about this though is that it allows you to jump in and jump out, which a lot of systems don't. I think it's pretty easy to use. And for me, that is a big plus. And then the fifth thing that I really like about this vehicle is the driving experience. Uh, this is a, you know, a seven seater SUV. It's a big car. It really is a large car, but it drives like you're driving a sedan. Very comfortable. It's got a decent turn radius, but what I like about it is the smooth drive experience. So whether I'm going through traffic or I'm going through a lot of bumps, uh, they need to fix the roads around here in Newark. Um, uh, the experience feels very, very comfortable. And yes, this isn't really noise proof. So you you can still hear a lot of the elements out there, but not as bad as some vehicles out there. It's pretty comfortable uh, to drive through and suspension is great. So the cool thing about the driving experience is that on the wheel itself, you can easily switch, switch between your driving mode. So going through things like your uh, eco mode, normal mode, your sports mode, my drive, which is kind of like your own select setting and snow. It's an easy process to do that. Plus, you do have uh, the camera system on the car that is quite extensive. So while I was just trafficating now, I turned on the camera. It actually, I have cameras by my side mirrors, which allow me to see exactly uh, what's happening as I'm turning. So I don't have to look at the mirror. So I've kind of used the mirrors less and less. I use it for initial check, but whenever I'm trafficating either way, that also works. Also, the, the cameras when parking, it's got a self parking mode, which you can use with your key fob and remote, which is great and simple to use. Being able to park in tighter spaces, moving out of a tight space, really makes a lot of sense with the way this car uh, works and functions. I like it, absolutely amazing. Um, and I think the driving experience for a lot of people will be something that they will definitely like. Now, you're going Thunder E, you've said a lot of great things about this car. Um, so what are the things that you don't like? Uh, there are a couple of things in this car that I'm not a fan of. So the first thing is the frunk. You know, I didn't talk about it earlier because uh, the frunk is really small. It's a tiny frunk. And for a car this size, where there's technically no engine, um, you know, combustion engine, the frunk is really small. There's enough space to put maybe a backpack or something smaller like that, like a briefcase. Uh, you do, you do, well, you will find your home charger kit in there, but that's pretty much it. Uh, another thing I don't like is actually in the interior. Now, you know, because you don't have a front, you do have a lot of space to drop down the seats and you can store, you know, packing stuff there, which is great. So me doing some moving currently, this has kind of helped out, but I don't like a split moon roof or sunroof and moon roof uh, because it just really it, I don't know, it just, to me, it just doesn't work. I think it's either you do a moon roof or you just kind of have a giant one roof or half a roof or something. I'm not a fan of that. Maybe it's just my personal, personal preference. That's not something I like. Um, another thing to point out is actually with that main giant, you know, cluster and uh, digital cluster in front of me. Now, it's great because I can clearly see, you know, my instruments in front, my speed, my, of course, uh, mileage. I can clearly see the entertainment stuff on the side. But that middle strip 
is annoying because my wheel blocks off a lot of things in my line of sight. So for me to actually look at, say, what some of the temperature reading is for the driver and for the passenger, you know, if it's not synced, I have to kind of lean right this way or kind of lean left so I can see either one and, and also see some of the other functionalities built in there. Not cool. Now, another thing I don't like is the location of the start button. You're thinking it's probably here, right? Nope. You're thinking, okay, what about here? No, it's not this button. Uh, it's actually, where is it? it? It's right here. It's underneath uh, the wiper selector, which is here. And that makes sense. And this is also the drive selector. So it's not a bad thing. You turn your car on, you know, uh, you have it on and you can go ahead and select the drive. It's pretty straightforward for that. But trying to find that button sometimes can be annoying because you jump into the car and you're going, okay, this and that. I also wish this actually just turned on when you jumped into the car uh, with your keys so you could actually just drive off and you didn't have to, have to hit, hit that button. Maybe it's an option in the settings. I haven't actually found that yet that you can actually do that. But this is not a good location for the start and stop button for the car. It should have been either there or here. And I think the final thing um, that I don't like is, uh, you know, range anxiety. And this is not a thing to do with the Kia, it's just to do with electric vehicles in total. And I think Tesla has this problem solved uh, with of their charging stations and how their charging network works. Um, I had a lot of trips this week, so I had to go charge and I'm going to go charge again. Now charging on this car, it works well. You can. Uh, um, open up the charge port by either tapping or you can also press a button in the car here. Uh, but the thing about the charge port, is, the charging situation is that um, while it's easy to find and I love the fact that the navigation you can hit charging and it will find a charge uh, spot for you, AC or DC charging. I went to go find a charging spot and I had issues with, you know, just connecting to a charging spot first. That took a while. And then the second issue I had was the fact that it just, it's not cheap. Uh, you know, I charged from about 20 to 80%. If initially said 45 minutes, you know, it's fast charging. So it took about 18 minutes, which is great. At least I, you know, it wasn't too long, but it was also about $36 or so. And I was thinking if I went to fully charge this car, you know, it, it might go up. Now it's not as bad as charging an SUV, a regular gasoline SUV at this size, but it's not as cheap as you, you think. And also the anxiety of, do I have enough electricity? to get my car back home, especially since I don't have a parking garage and I can't charge at home. Because a lot of people will talk about that. I think it's something that has to be said and put into thought. But that being said though, the driving experience in this car has been great. My biggest joy of this car is that when you get it and sit in it, you feel like you're driving a regular car. I like the feel of the car. This is something that most people who talk about electric vehicles don't seem to state or understand. You know, people, I have friends who talk about Teslas and other electric vehicles, and I go, to me, it doesn't matter. Do I like the car? Because as someone who's going to eventually buy a car, not me now, but anyone who's watching this video, the main thing that you, the main thing that you want to know is, does this car fit me? Because this is most likely your second most expensive purchase in your lifetime, first being your home. So you want to basically love this car. You're going to be using it for a while. You want to appreciate it and you want to have a very good experience driving this car. And I think that's something a lot of people miss out that I think should be noted. So if you guys have any questions, or any comments, let me know. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Leave your thoughts down below and always enjoy your entertainments.